Hello fellow YouTubers. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be able to sell firearms out of your home? Well stay tuned because you're about to find out. Hello everybody, I'm Jay. I'm the owner of Little Johnny's Firearms, a home-based, ATF-licensed, federal firearms dealer. Contrary to what you might believe, becoming a licensed dealer out of your home is not a very difficult process. There's an application that you need to fill out. You need to have fingerprinting done, a couple photos, notify your chief law enforcement officer, and then send it in. The number one reason why most home-based uh, federal firearms licensed dealers applications don't get approved isn't because of your past criminal history, isn't because of uh, insurance, not having a safe, an alarm system in your house. The number one reason why most are denied is because they don't follow their local zoning laws to have a home-based uh, FFL business. I'm not saying that if you have a criminal history of felonies on your record, that you're going to get a uh, FFL because uh, you're not. Um, but that is not the number one reason why uh, most do not get licensed um, by the ATF. Now, when you decide you want to be an FFL, one of the most important decisions you need to make is what type of FFL you want to be. Um, there are several different types of licenses. The most prevalent and common one is your type one FFL, which is a dealer or a gunsmith of firearms. This allows you to deal uh, with handguns, uh, rifles, and um, do gunsmithing work as well. The next type or popular one would be your Form 7, which actually allows you to do everything that a Form 1 can do, uh, but you can also manufacture firearms. This means that you can buy basically the uh, pieces of a firearm and assemble it, put your own serial number on it, and then go ahead and turn it for a profit. Then the next popular uh, license is actually an addition uh, to your FFL would be getting your SOT. Uh, an SOT basically allows you to deal with uh, what they call NFA items. Uh, these NFA items are such things as uh, short barrel rifles, suppressors, uh, and automatic weapons. What does it cost to get your FFL? Well, again, it depends on what kind you want. If you're just going for a Form 1, your initial application fee is $200. And then it's a three-year renewal fee of $90. If you're going to go for your Type 7, it's an application fee of $150, but then a three-year renewal fee of $150. And then finally, there's your SOT, which is the most expensive, which is your add-on supplement to your Form 1 and Form 7, which actually costs $500 per year. If you don't know which FFL you want, majority of people start off with the Form 1 because this will allow them to deal with 95% of the firearm transactions that there are out there. Then what happens is, is after three years, when you're up for your renewal, uh, if you decide that you really want to get into it, but now you want to manufacture firearms, you can actually fill out another application and submit your Form 7. It's kind of a pain with the ATF because you can't just uh, pay the $150 uh, renewal and just switch it over. You actually have to go through the entire application process all over again to switch from one form to the next form. Should you get your SOT to deal with suppressors, and uh, automatic weapons, short barrel rifles. That's gonna be a personal decision that you're gonna have to make. Again, it's $500 per year for it. Um, there are pretty good markups on suppressors. So you might be able to make that back within like two to three suppressor sales to get that back. Um, another add-on that you might wanna consider doing is um, when you do these, uh, what they call NFA items for your SOT, uh, these people have to apply for tax stamps in order to get this, which is another form uh, that the purchaser fills out when they buy the item, and it's $200 uh, for that stamp. Um, but to facilitate the process, you can actually do electronic fingerprinting out of your home as well uh, to help facilitate that process and make it simpler for the purchaser to actually transfer that firearm into them. And you can charge extra for that too. Usually, uh, I've seen most dealerships, when they do NFA uh, transfers, uh, charging anywhere from $75 to $150 for the transfer on top of the price of the suppressor that you just sold. The other drawback, the SOT process is also very slow. 
um, there is an electronic form uh, that you and the purchaser need to fill out uh, when you submit these fingerprints. It was supposed to be a 90 day process. However, um, we have not seen that. Um, it can take up to roughly eight months uh, to process this application, which means that when they purchase the suppressor, they purchase that short barrel rifle. You need to store that on your property for that eight months until that tax stamp gets approved by the ATF. Uh, so the purchaser can acquire uh, that suppressor or short barrel rifle that they purchased from you. So now you've decided which FFL you wanna get. You submit your application, your monies, your fingerprints and your picture. What happens then? Well, when the ATF gets your application, if you pay with a credit card, they're immediately gonna charge you that $200 fee as soon as they get it. And they're gonna start the background process. They're gonna process your fingerprints. They're gonna make sure that you're not wanted or have any felony convictions, um, uh, convictions of domestic violence, uh, drug charges. Make sure that you meet all the prerequisites on the criminal side uh, for you to have your um, federal firearms license. This process takes roughly four weeks or so. And then what happens is, is they forward that application off to the local field office to where you live. And you're assigned to an IOI, which is your industry operations investigator. Now, they are not uh, law enforcement agents. They don't have arrest powers. They don't carry firearms. Uh, basically, what they do is they uh, facilitate the application process. They will come out to your home. They will do an interview. Depending who your IOI is, it could be a very short interview of 10, 15 minutes. It could be several hours. What their job, what they're doing is one is making sure that you seem like somebody uh, that can be trusted with an FFL license. Basically, it's like a mini interview. And they will go over all the laws and regulations uh, that pertain to being a federal firearms license dealer. Uh, filling out your 4473, which is the uh, paperwork that's need to be filled out every time a transfer is done of a firearm. Making sure that you're filling out your bound book correctly which is basically where you record all the firearms that are in your inventory, when you're brought in, who they're brought in from, did somebody sell it to you, was it a transfer from another FFL such as a distributor, and then when you distribute that firearm, take it out of your inventory and transfer it to somebody else. Your IOI is also responsible for doing your auditing. Usually what happens is, is once a year, your IOI will show up at your home if you're a home-based FFL, and they will query uh, or ask you to query certain information uh, from your bound book. They might wanna see the last three months of transactions, the last six months. They wanna make sure that it was filled out correctly. There's 10 specific things that they're usually looking for, uh, which are like the big no-nos, which you can't do. Uh, for example, uh, when you sell uh, more than one firearm within a five-day uh, period, uh, either together or separately, you need to fill out another form, which is a multi-transaction of firearm form, uh, basically saying that, saying that this person uh, purchased uh, more than one firearm within a five-day period. They might want to check to see if you're doing straw purchases. A straw purchase is when somebody buys a firearm for somebody else when they're not legally allowed to possess one themselves. They want to make sure that you're putting serial numbers onto your bound book for the firearms that you're transferring. They want to make sure that you're putting down the correct uh, model. They're going to want you to pull some of your 4473s and ask you, you know, check that to make sure that those are filled out correctly. Occasionally, you might get a phone call from your I.O. because they want to do a trace on a firearm. Basically, what a trace is, is that, uh, for example, if a firearm is used in a crime and they find out that the firearm was purchased from me, they might want all the information based on that transaction. Did I do a background check? Uh, was a 4473 filled out correctly? Who purchased the firearm? When was it purchased? Uh, so that's what a trace is. 95% uh, of the time, they don't even tell you what they need it for. They just say, hey, listen, I want to see all firearms that you've done in this period from this period. Or we have this specific day, we'd like to see all firearms you do. And you basically download your bound book and you email it to them. Once your IOI feels confident that you understand the regulations or will learn the regulations, uh, the next step from there is you basically sign this tablet saying that you received all these regulations. Um, and then within about two weeks, uh, your ATF uh, FFL license shows up in the mail and you can begin dealing in the transaction of firearms. I hope I answered all your questions on what it takes to become an FFL. If not, or you have additional questions, please feel free to leave me a comment and smash that subscribe button. I'm going to be coming out with more topics in the future. Thanks and have a great day.